I've not seen such bravery. It's no secret that I love the humongous entertainment adventure games. I've already done a video on one of them, but it's been a while since then, and you guys seem to want me to review another HE game. That's not a request that I'm willing to turn down. So let's take a look at one of the classics. Spy Fox. The humongous entertainment games always came with a suggestion as to what age group of kids would enjoy that particular game. These suggestions would become increasingly vague with future releases, but I think it's pretty obvious that Spy Fox was meant for the most mature audiences. Like me. The first game in the Spy Fox series is called Spy Fox and Dry Cereal. As the title implies, the big crisis is that someone, namely William the Kid here, <laughs> is trying to get rid of all the dairy milk in the world. That means no butter, no ice cream, no cheddar cheese, and worst of all, no milk for cereal. The idea of eating dry breakfast cereal is pretty hard to swallow. Ah oh, man, please don't tell me that this game is going to be filled with one-liners like that. Yes, it is. I wish I hadn't left my parachute in my other tuxedo. Does Spy Fox sound a bit different than you remember? It's entirely possible. After being bought by Infograms, Humongous actually redubbed the entire game for British audiences. I like the redubbed version a lot better, because in the US one, Spy Fox sounds a lot like Maxwell Smart and Inspector Gadget, which I thought got kind of annoying. But in the British version, everyone talks in a British accent. What, what? You're so insensitive. You know that. How would you like it if I started doing your stupid fucking voice, eh? Hi guys, my name's Brutal Moose, and I have to drive down the highway to get to the candy store to get a cell phone to then ring up the diaper company to... Uh, more American terminology. See? It doesn't feel good, does it? Bloody wanker. I can't get very far into the story without running into a James Bond reference. This is Monkey Penny, whose name is an obvious reference to Miss Money Penny from the Bond universe. Both of these seem like really unfortunate names to have. This is just one of many Bond references in the game, and I'm not gonna waste time pointing them all out. Though I will say that I find it odd that there's so many of them. I mean, I wouldn't expect kids ages 5 to 10 to pick up on James Bond references, but maybe kids are just smarter than I give them credit for. <laughs> Gameplay is pretty standard as far as humongous entertainment point and clicks go. See something? Click on it. Don't know what you're supposed to be doing? Click on stuff. Our first job as Spy Fox is to find and rescue the head of Amalgamated Moo Juice Incorporated, Mr. Howard Hugh Heifer Utterly III. He's a cow that runs a dairy farm. That seems to be all kinds of messed up to me. Also, we literally identify him using a picture of his ass, because that was apparently the only picture available. He's lucky that all that milk is gone, or that's the picture that would have made it onto the carton. Utterly recounts being kidnapped by William the Kid's goons and gives us a few clues as to what the villain is up to. Also, he does this. William is going to capture all the dairy cows, shoot all the dairy milk into space, then flood the earth with it. Then he's going to blame the cows and make everyone drink goat milk. Okay... So our job is to find and stop William with the help of some spy gadgets. There's x-ray gum, silly putty, uh, nickel... shoe? Among the similarities of other humongous entertainment adventures, Spy Fox introduces a game mechanic that I actually found to be pretty neat. After meeting significant or mysterious characters, their faces appear in your notebook. You can use this to interrogate others about that person, which I thought was a pretty fitting addition to a spy game. How much is that cute stuffed kitty you have there? It is a little expensive, sir, but I would be happy to throw in some free stuffed kitty litter. The guy running the trinket stand is undoubtedly my favorite character in the game. His name is Gilbert, and he does not give a single fuck. Welcome to the Trinket Emporium. My name is Gilbert. How may I be of service to you? Oh, honorable visitor to this our dear island home. His speech is filled with as much enthusiasm as an Amish person has in a Best Buy. Unfortunately, he's only there for us to copy his invitation to get on a boat, and to sell us a jar of trinkets that we can use to gamble with in a game of Go Fish against a giant pig to win a boat captain's lucky charm back for him. 
Okay. Pleased to meet you. My name is Fox. Spy Fox. You know, I've never been a spy before, but I feel like it's not the best profession to be advertising, especially if you're out on a mission. Just seems like there are a few jobs out there that work better if you stay hidden. Hey there, fellow youth. How would you like to try a drug or two? I'm sorry, do I know you? Of course, my brother. It's me, Undercover Cop Joe. Now how about you and I try one of these LSDs? With a copy of Gilbert's Invitation in hand, we're able to board the SS Deadweight, which has really cool background music. Humongous Adventure devotees will recognize this as a remix of the music in Pajama Sam's room. After some super sleuthing, we find out that the boat made a mysterious visit to... uh... there. So we go to... there, and find... this. Interesting. A pool of white water. I've never seen white water like this before. So, uh, innuendos aside, we've stumbled upon this inefficiently shaped pipe pumping milk into the ocean. The pipe leads to this metal door. No need to look for a key, though, because with a few quick adjustments, we're able to fire a missile off the top of a sunken plane and break it open. I can't believe 10-year-olds buy this crap. Unfortunately, there's no magical sunken missile plane in the following room, and we have to seek the help of an informant to get it open. Our informant, Marta Harry, has some important information for you. Where can I find Marta Harry? I'm not sure. All she said is that she's underwater and you'll treasure her disguise. Underwater and I'll treasure her disgu- Oh. Oh! Agent Fox, it's good to be working with you again. Just to make sure we're all on the same page here, what we're looking at is a giraffe with a string of pearls resting atop an air helmet hiding in a treasure chest at the bottom of the ocean, talking to a fox in a frog suit. Just, just, we just gotta accept it. The majestic sea giraffe hands us this doohickey with her nubby little giraffe arms, which we then use to open the locked door. Forget that it was just underwater and still works perfectly fine, and don't ask where the giraffe found it in the first place. Logic has no place in an educational game like this. Now that we've infiltrated William the Kid's secret base, it's just a few puzzles until we reach his office. Oh! This must be Kid's secret volcano office. Oh, I'm sorry, his secret volcano office. When the hell did we go from being underwater to being inside of a volcano? Okay. Well, volcano or not, we're able to take a key from the office, which we need to disarm that space milk rocket thing. The milky weapon of destruction. Yeah, I'm not calling it that. Of course. I can't disarm the milky weapon of destruction until I put the key into this control panel. Oh, so that's how you do it. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, it was really nice of them to include a Yoko Ono song in the soundtrack. <laughs> It is not over yet, my foxy nemesis. When I pull this lovely lever, the cow stables will become completely flooded with milk. That's the most despicable thing I've ever seen. Oh yeah, it sure sounds like it. You know what, Spy Fox? If you ever want to show some emotion other than smug asshole, that'd be totally fine by me. Maybe take your hands out of your pockets every now and again to look like you... I don't know, give a shit. This is a serious situation we're in here. We have to save all the dairy cows in the world. All four of them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course the entire world's dairy products can't be provided by just four cows. It's six cows. Da doi. With a simple pull of a lever, the cows are free and crisis has been averted. William escapes, Spy Fox is given a cookie for his heroics, and only six people in the world care. As with the other humongous games, Spy Fox has different storylines which increases its replayability, and there is an ending in which you chase after and take down William. As far as childhood games go, Spy Fox ended up faring alright when I revisited it.
it. Art direction was always one of Humongous' strong suits, and this game was no different. I really love how the game looks, but I'm not really a big fan of its setting. Most of my time was spent either on a boat or in a bar, which is admittedly more exciting than Fatty Bear's setting of a house, but it's nowhere near as cool a setting as the Land of Darkness or the fucking moon. But at the end of the day, Spy Fox did its job and taught me some important lessons, like that gambling is fun, happy hour is awesome, and this. Uh, just one couldn't hurt. It's you. Don't ever do that again.